Hello everyone, and welcome to a new video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about pretty much the 5-10 to 10 year plan for Hershey Park. But it's more just what roller coasters are coming next. I'm not going to give an exact order or what years. I'm just going to kind of talk about and predict what coasters may be coming next. Some of these can be a little unlikely, but I'm going to try to make them mostly realistic. If you're new to my channel and haven't subscribed yet, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. It would really help me with the YouTube algorithm. Okay, I thought it'd be easier if I made a checklist for Hershey Park. Let's talk about airtime first. We have that with Skyrush, Candemonium, and Comet. And other rides can give some airtime, but those three airtime is kind of their main focus. Wooden coasters. Well, Comet is the best one. They do have two other GCI wooden coasters with Wildcat and Lightning Racer. Now, multi loopers. You can argue that Sidewinder is a multi looper, same with Great Bear. But technically, they both have more than one inversion. Well, technically more than two inversions. And then the most obvious is Fahrenheit. Now launch. Well, this is obviously Storm Runner. For hybrid, they don't have any yet. So that's something that they could definitely use. Family, they have Trailblazer and Coco Cruiser. Hyper slash Giga, they have Skyrush and Candemonium. Now the last two, these are gonna be easy. For under the track, you have Great Bear. And for spinning, you have Laugh Track. Right now, I want to focus on a very popular model, a very good crowd pleaser, and a huge capacity monster. This is the Dive Coaster. This is a very likely option because a GP, about 90 to 95% of the audience that visit the park love these coasters. Coaster enthusiasts, on the other hand, don't always, which personally I am actually a really big fan of these. The best restraints do kind of restrict some of the airtime that you'd get on that drop, but they're still really fun. One of the big reasons is because Emperor at SeaWorld San Diego is rumored to only cost around 11 to 12 million dollars. And since we just came out of a pandemic, this would be a very smart option for Hershey Park because it'll draw in a lot of crowds, but won't cost too much money. I feel like if they're gonna do this, they could replace Tidal Force with this because that ride is starting to show its age. I feel like within a year or two, it'll be gone. And like a lot of roller coasters, they don't add them right after removing, like take Wicked Twister, for example. That's just sitting there being demolished, nothing planned yet. But anyway, it could have a custom layout. Maybe since tight space to work with, maybe it'd have like an overbank turn or a hammerhead turn after the first drop instead of an Immelman. And then maybe an Immelman after the mid-course brake run. What coaster can provide great laterals and ejector airtime, but also costs under $10 million? Not many except for the Chance Hyper GTX. This ride is a great model for small parks. And even though Hershey Park is not a small park, these intense coasters would do great things for any park. This one would probably have a custom layout with an inversion like a zero g roll or a dive loop. It would be about maybe 125 feet tall, making it the tallest Hyper GTX. This chance rides Hyper GTX costs only about seven to 10 million. What park wouldn't be willing to spend that little on a coaster so good? Now let's talk about where it would go. There are not many places to put a new coaster without removing rides and buildings, but that doesn't mean there are any. See this area? Imagine a Chance Rides Hyper GTX sitting right there on that plot of land. Now how cool would that be? According to Google Earth, Lightning Run at Kentucky Kingdom takes up about 47,000 square feet of land, and the Hershey Park area takes up about 62,000 square feet of land. But we have to remember, to get that land, the new coaster would either have to maneuver above and around the Twin Turnpike, or Hershey Park would have to take it away. There's a manufacturer who Hershey Park has worked with before, but never again. This manufacturer has come back in other countries and started constructing some amazing coasters. This is Vekoma, more specifically the Vekoma Bermuda Blitz. This ride 
is a new gen Vekoma Mini Hyper, almost like Vekoma's take on an Intamin Megalite. You might be confused to why I chose a Bermuda Blitz instead of like a Shockwave or some other launch coaster, and if you watch till the end, you will find out. These coasters really do look amazing, and I'm very surprised that they haven't come to America yet. An even bigger reason for them to come to America is that almost every amusement park in America has a Vekoma, whether it's a Boomerang, SLC, Flying Dutchman, or even a giant inverted boomerang, or even like Invertigo at Kings Island or something like that. So if this is proof that the parks will be able to work with Vekoma, you might be wondering. If I just predicted two good sized coasters, then where would I put this one and the other ones? Well, there is always a solution, and Hershey would not be the first one to do it. Let's talk about Kentucky Kingdom again. When they had no more room left to expand, they expanded across the road. As you can see in this picture, Hershey Park has enough land on the other side to almost double the size of the park. I'm not saying that they will obviously do this soon, but it's a good option for Hershey Park to gain more land and there's not many other places to build new coasters in the park. There have been rumors going around about Wildcat getting either the RMC iBox track or the GCI Titan track. The most likely option would be for Hershey Park to give GCI a call instead so they can not lose GCI's first ever coaster. So that leaves Lightning Racer to get arm seed. Or does it? Lightning Racer has just got an entire new operating system and no park would pay for something like that just to retract the entire coaster and get a whole new operating system. So there's only one more way for Hershey Park to get their long waited iBox coaster. And no, it is not to RMC Comet, but to build an all new ground up hyper hybrid in Chocolate Town. And I know it sounds like a weird thing to put a hyper next to another hyper, but Candemonium and this hybrid would offer completely different experiences. With Candemonium and its 5 second floater hill, and more, a lot more floater at a time, and the RMC with its ejector at a time hills and crazy inversions. This would have a steel lift hill and stall just like Zadra at Energylandia, and like Goliath at Six Flags Great America. This would most likely be the only coaster able to fit in Chocolate Town, of course with the exception of some flat rides and a kitty coaster or two. Last but not least, the LSM coaster Hershey Park has wanted for years, but not just any launch coaster, an Intamin Blitz. And I know that everyone's gonna say how Hershey Park doesn't work with Intamin because of unreliability but that hasn't been confirmed. And also, if they see the success of Velocicoaster, Hyperion, Conda, Pantheon, and many more, then they might just decide to make plans with Intamin and build a Blitz coaster. These are some plans that I drew of the possible Intamin Blitz might be coming to Hershey Park sometimes in the next five to 10 years. If this happens, it would probably be right next to the Bermuda Blitz on the other side of the road, bringing people more to the back of the park. Starting off with a slow launch like found on Cheetah Hunt, and then a turnaround into an LSM holding section, before launching from 0 to 80 miles per hour in 3 seconds, up into a kind of new element and outer bank top hat followed by a right downward helix. After that is a switch back into a 270 degree left upward helix, into some various airtime moments and double up trick track. Then a turn into the infamous Zero-G stall. After the stall would have some turns and more airtime moments into the mid-course brake run. Cruising at a speed of 15 miles per hour, the train quickly accelerates from 15 to 65 miles per hour in two seconds up into a 90 degree left overbank turn followed by a wave turn and then a non-inverting loop. Once it goes through the loop, it will go through some helixes, airtime moments, and a heartline roll before the final breaks. Could you imagine if Hershey Park decided to go this route and build a massive Intamin Blitz? Well, that brings us to the end of the video. If you made it this far, I would really like you to subscribe, and I'm even just happy that you made it this far at all. If you have any different ideas, please share them in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video.